Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. In this video, pag-aaralan natin ang Fibonacci sequence at iba pang concepts na related sa Fibonacci sequence. Without further ado, let's get this lesson started. Leonardo Pisano Fibonacci, siya yung nagpaumpisa ng investigation sa sequence na to. Kaya nga sa kanya pinangalan yung sequence na pag-aaralan natin ngayon. He investigated the rabbit birth problem. So ano ba yung problem na nakapag-lead sa kanya para makuha or para mabuo yung concept ng Fibonacci sequence? So nag-investigate siya ng birth ng rabbit in terms of months. So, after ng unang month, wala pa silang offspring, pero yung mga sumunod na months, dumami na sila ng dumami in such a way na merong nakitang pattern si Fibonacci sa mga number of rabbits na nabibilang niya at the start of every month. And that pattern is what we know as the Fibonacci sequence. So, ang Fibonacci sequence, isa lang talaga yung set of terms niya, which is ito. Ang sinasabi ni Leonardo ay sa unang month, isang pair pa lang yung involved. However, after the second month, naging dalawa na yung count. On the fourth month, tatlo na yung rabbit. On the next month, lima na. Tapos sa susunod 8, tapos sa susunod 13, hanggang sa dumami ng dumami yung rabbit. Now, he rests the proposition na what if walang namatay na rabbit, Ilan yung rabbits na mabibilang niya every start of the month? Malalaman natin yon kung itutuloy natin itong Fibonacci sequence. Na-observe niya na yung next term ay makukuha kapag pinag-add yung dalawang term na nauna. For example, itong number 2. Makukuha natin itong number 2 kung ia-add natin yung 1 at 1 na nauna sa kanya. At the same time, 1 plus 2 will give rise to 3. 2 plus 3 will result to 5. 3 plus 5 will result to 8. 5 plus 8 will result to 13, and so on. So, nakakuha si Leonardo Fibonacci ng isang formula para ma-describe tong Fibonacci sequence, which is this one. A sub n is equal to A sub n minus 1 plus A sub n minus 2. Wherein yung a sub n yung nth term, a sub n minus 1 yung term bago mag a sub n, tapos yung a sub n minus 2 yung term bago mag a sub n minus 1. Saan ba ginagamit itong Fibonacci sequence na to? Many naturally occurring phenomena and art follow Fibonacci sequence. For example, if you will see or if you will observe the petals of common flowers o kaya yung growth ng branches sa isang plant, yung sides ng banana na hindi pa napipil off, tapos yung number of pineapple scales, pati yung growth ng cancer cells, more or less, they follow a Fibonacci sequence. At the same time, itong Fibonacci sequence, it gave rise to other properties or other concept na nagagamit din natin in the field of arts. For example, itong Fibonacci spiral. If you construct a series of squares with length equal to the Fibonacci numbers and trace a line through the diagonals of each square, it forms a Fibonacci spiral. So, tingnan natin itong nahiram ko na drawing. So, kung gagawa daw tayo ng square, such that yung measure ng isang side ng square ay nagfa-follow sa Fibonacci sequence. For example, ito 1, ang sumunod ay 1, tapos 2, tapos 3 by 3 na, tapos 5 by 5, 8 by 8, tapos 13 by 13, and so on. Pag tinrace natin yung mga diagonal nila, we can form this spiral. At ang tawag sa spiral na to ay Fibonacci spiral. Maraming iba't ibang real-life example ng Fibonacci spiral. It can be the growth of petals in a flower o kaya yung shell. At pwede rin nating sabihin na in some way, yung Mona Lisa painting ni Leonardo da Vinci, it follows a Fibonacci spiral. Another concept na related sa Fibonacci sequence ay golden ratio. Golden ratio involves two numbers na yung sum ng numbers na yun, kapag dinivide sa larger number, ay equal sa sagot 
kapag yung larger number dinivide by the smaller number. The golden ratio is equal to 1.618, approximately yan yung value, and it is always represented by the capital letter phi. So ito, yung tinatawag natin na golden ratio. So paano yan na-visualize? Say for example, meron tayong isang line. etong line na to, one unit yung kanyang measure. Dahil yan yung kabuuan, let us refer to that as A plus B. Now, try nating hatiin tong line, i-divide natin tong line, yung isang line A, yung pangalawang line B. Parang ganito. Yung A, sabihin nating 0.618 unit, tapos yung B naman, 0.382 units. Kung mapapansin nyo, pag inad natin yung A at B, yung 0.618 tsaka yung 0.382, it will sum up to 1. So, subukan natin gawin tong golden ratio na to. Una, sabi A plus B over A. So, ibig sabihin, ang A plus B natin ay 1, tapos ang A natin ay 0.618. Kapag dinivide natin to, we will get 1.61812 and so on. Round off natin sa ikatatlong decimal number. So, more or less, it's 1.618. Ito yung unang part ng golden ratio na ipinakita kanina, this one. Now, gawin naman natin itong second part, A over B. A over B, so A natin ay 0.618 divided by B which is 0.382. Kapag dinivide natin yan, that will be equal to 1.61780 and so on. Kapag itong number na to ay in-round off natin, it will also result to 1.618. So, yan yung ibig sabihin ng golden ratio. Kapag yung isang buong line i-divide natin into a certain measurement, it will satisfy this condition. A plus B over A is equal to A over B. Laging tandaan, yung A yung mas malaking number, yung B yung mas maliit, at yung A at B yung kabuuan nilang dalawa. Going further, Kung i-investigate natin tong golden ratio na ito, let's take A over B equals A plus B over A. Ang gawin natin, itong right side, gawin natin tong magkahiwalay na fraction. Something like this. I-distribute natin in such a way itong denominator. Paghiwalayin natin ng fraction ito, isang fraction. Tapos ito, another fraction. And then, dahil itong A over B, ay equal naman sa phi. Palta natin ng phi. Substitute natin. Tapos yung A over A, dahil equal yung numerator at denominator, pwede nating isulat na lang as 1. Tapos itong B over A, dahil reciprocal lang siya ng A over B na phi, pwede natin siyang isulat as the reciprocal of phi. So, ito na yung ating working equation. Try natin i-prove itong phi equals 1 plus 1 over phi using the value of phi na alam natin, which is 1.618. Substitute lang natin yung 1.618 dun sa denominator ng pangalawang term. Tapos, i-divide natin to. 1 divided by 1.618 is equal to 0 0.61804 and so on. Pag inad natin dun sa 1, it will be 1.618046. Again, i-round off natin sa ikatlong decimal number and we will arrive with 1.618. So, ang gusto ko lang mapalabas dito, kahit yung phi ay isubstitute natin sa formula niya, ang magiging sagot is still the same value of phi. So, isa ito sa interesting concept ng golden ratio na kahit yung value niya ay substitute sa sariling formula, it will still arrive with the same value of 1.618. Tulad ng sabi ko kanina, mas maraming application ang golden ratio sa art dahil ginagamit ito sa pang-measure ng canvas or ginagamit ito sa mismong pagpipaint ng painting Ginagamit din ng golden ratio sa pagkoconceptualize ng iba't ibang architectural designs and buildings.
So that's it for some of the concepts related to Fibonacci sequence. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.